OpenAI Unified allows you to create chat loops, talk to GPT Vision, create complex agent workflows, generate images, perform similarity search, and create vector DBs very easily and quickly. OpenAI Unified script just simplifies your calls with GPT. All you have to do is import the GPT calls, initialize it, and just send a message. It will initialize the class, and then there we go. You can easily create a continuous chat loop. Let's say, let's ask, let's say, hi there. Say, how are you? Let's say, my name is Echo. Let's ask, what's my name? Your name is Echo. It automatically keeps track of message history. I have unified all the useful calls from OpenAI, such as chatting with GPT-4, talking with GPT Vision, generating images with Dolly, also getting embeddings from text embeddings endpoint, and do computing similarity search. With this class, you can also manage whether you want to use JSON mode or not, streaming or not, or you want to use the async versions of each one of the methods. Because I have included the async versions of each one of the calls if you wanted to make calls in parallel. You can also initialize it with max history words if you want to set a limit to your history. Also, max word per, per message for softly instructing GPT on how long of a response we want it to return. Let's set it to three and try it again. I'm going to ask for a story about AI. And it responds with three words because we set the max word per message to three. Tell me about NVIDIA, graphics, AI, innovations. OpenAI unified class, along with all the files I'm going to display, will be available at Patreon. Link will be in the description. It will be available at the AI architect level. If you need help about how to use it, you can call the help method. And this will print a help dialog explaining what each method does and how you can initialize them with different settings. And also it writes it to a help.txt file. If you want to add more control over it, you can use the add message method to add system messages. Let's ask for uh, to respond only with emojis. And we're going to ask for our large language models by adding a user message. And we're going to use the get response method. And here are the emojis that describe large language models. Let's use GPT Vision. I have this image here as 1.png. All I have to do is just initialize the GPT and then call GP, get GPT Vision response with that image. And we can also print our history and then our history length. We're gonna get a streaming response. There we go. This image appears to be a promotional graphic. It's for one of my videos. And then here we have printed the message history and our message length in word, our history length in words, number of words. It is simple and easy to write complex agent workflows using OpenAI Unified. Here we are defining a coder GPT with JSON mode set to true and three reviewer agents with JSON mode set to false and async set to true when we run this. The coder agent will try to write a tower defense game and we'll start writing it in uh, JSON mode. After that, we have a function which will call the reviewers in parallel at the same time for as many times as we have specified in these iterations. And we will get a review, combine it, and actually get coder GPT to try to improve on the code based on that. This will all take place in this file right here, code for folder right here, coder agent. As you can see, the coder agent is done, and three of the reviewers are hard at work right now, providing feedback. So they're finished with their suggestions. Coder GPT will take those into account and make a new plan and rewrite the code. We can review the, the we can take a look at the reviews. This was the first review. Here is the second one. It is written to a text file under coder agent folder. And all of this was possible in uh, 63 lines of code using OpenAI Unified. As I said, you can download the code files for this from my Patreon. This class took me a little over 10 hours to put together. If you do become a patron, you'll have access to it and many such projects, over 200 of them. So if you want to save time and new, learn new and interesting concepts by uh, using my projects, consider becoming a patron. I appreciate your support. Here is the improved code. And we have written another review about it. And Chad to uh, Coder GPT is hard at work improving it one more time. Our coder agent has stopped working. Let's uh, run it. And this is the first iteration. And this is the second iteration it has generated. As you can see, we get an enemy. We can place towers. And when they come within the range of a tower, they keep disappearing. And our score is updating. And this is the final version right here. And we can place towers. And these towers actually shoot out bullets. So this is pretty cool. I never was able to achieve this before. But uh, this worked out just fine. So we were able to build a very effective uh, coding agent using Unified Chat, OpenAI Unified, I mean. We can generate images by just calling the generate image method. It will generate the image, show it to you, and save it to a file. If you didn't want to save it, just set the save parameter to false. And also you can modify the show parameter as well. 
we can get the similarity scores between two text pieces by just in just uh, 18 lines of code. And the similarity between these two is 0 0.99. If we want it, we can use the text embedding three small model, and that returns 0 0.99 as well. If we were to compare Hawaii is a beautiful place to visit and a vacation spot, we'll see that its similarity is 0 0.46. We can do this because OpenAI Unified has methods for getting the embeddings and also performing similarity search. We can actually use the async versions of the methods and actually get uh, compare them, get the embeddings at the same time, uh, reducing our time to process the similarity search. We can actually create an entire similarity search system using a vector DB in 73 lines of code. I have some text here. I'm going to split it into 50 character chunks, write it to a SQLite file, and be able to perform search over them. So within just a few seconds, our embeddings have been generated in SQLite. You can see that our database has been populated with our text and embedding pairs. We can use DB browser to see our embeddings, which corresponds to each one of our text pieces. Let's search for Turing, and it returns Ellen Turing was the first person with a search time result. When we search for computer, it finds computer science that develops and studies. And yeah, these are kind of broken apart, but nevertheless, it's able to find the relevant text pieces. And it was possible because we just used the get embedding async function with async IO. We created tasks for all, each one of the chunks, and then we just simply called it with async IO. And when we are performing search, we are using again get embedding async to get the search term embeddings. And then we perform similarity search with the similarity search async method. So now let's review the code. And like I said, all these files will be available at my Patreon. Link will be in the description. Before I continue, I just want to say that if you like my content, you can find all my videos easily at my website at echohive.live, along with their descriptions and the code download links if you're a patron. Also, check out the auto streamer app that I built. You can watch the live stream here. It pretty much creates content in real time, so you can actually live stream and build course websites in real time. You can watch the live stream here and visit a sample site that it has built. You can visit the website and actually brush up on your Python. Also, CodeHive provides 900 plus GPT powered Python applications. You can just do a search and browse and get some ideas. You can actually copy this code into your IDE and I run it right away. If you like the code files, you can actually download them from my Patreon for $100 currently. It's a CodeHive.app. Links to these apps will be in the description. So this uh, OpenAI Unified is not so complex. It's just there's a lot of things to deal about, deal with, and it has uh, 470 lines of code, including the help method. But if you, even if you don't include the help method, it's about 400 lines and took me quite a while to put together. But it really makes your life a lot easier. Requirements for this is OpenAI, Term Colors, Scikit-Learn, NumPy, and Pandas. And I'll include these requirements in the download. So we are essentially just, we can initialize the API key, the models, makes history words for our message history keeping, makes words per message, which is like a soft instruction, which is added to the messages of GPT, as you can see right here, if you do set it. This is better than setting makes tokens, as makes tokens parameter can make your responses get cut off. So this is like a gentle, gentle instruction, and a GPT-4 tends to follow it uh, nicely. You can set JSON mode to true or false, streaming to true or false, and you can actually choose to use the async versions of these functions. When you initialize the class, this message will be printed. If you didn't want it, you can just comment it out. And if you are using async, we'll use async OpenAI, otherwise regular OpenAI. It is an add message method, which takes in a role and content and it adds it appropriately and checks for if mixed words per message has been sent set as well. It also has a print history length, which you can use. You can clear the history of any one of its instances. It has a very nice chat method, which uses the add message and get response combined to just get an answer for you right away. Trim history actually trims the message history based on the mix history words uh, parameter. And here is the add message async method, the clear history async, chat async, trim history async. So get response method checks if we are using JSON mode and it uses the model history stream and uh, response format. You can also pass in additional arguments like mixed token. It will automatically handle it. We also handle for the streaming or not. And then we have the async version of the same function. It 
which is important for streaming because you have to use an async for to uh, deal with streaming. So it has the GPT vision methods, both for both for a regular version and the async version. And the default question is what's in this image, but you can actually change this as well. So you can actually use the question parameter to change, for example, here we're calling the GPT vision to get a description for this one PNG, but we want this time we want it in French. And at first, we're just going to get the response with the default response. And second, we're going to get it in French. Here we are also using the gpt.history and print history link. Here at first, we're getting a regular description in English. And after that, we are getting the description in French. So all you have to do is just change the question parameter. We, are, we also have a generate image method also which uses local files. And also we have the async version of that method. I forgot to mention that we are using pillow to display the images when you have set the show parameter and say parameter to true. So I've added that into the requirements. So the generate image, both in async mode and in regular mode, will actually it's default set to save and show true. So it will not only save and enumerate the files that are being saved, but it will also show them as well. Last but not least, we have the get embeddings. You can specify the model, and uh, it's defaults to the embedding three large. And then we have the get embeddings async. Of course, when you're getting embeddings, you want to do them in parallel, and you can use the async method. And then we have the similarity search, which will take in two embeddings and return a cosine similarity, which we are using from scikit-learn. And at the end, we have a help method, which just prints colorfully explanations of each method, and it also saves it to help.txt. If you do download this OpenAI Unified file and you want to modify it, you can also modify the help method as well. I do offer consulting and one-on-one -on -one meetings to certain tier patrons, and currently there is one spot available at AI Virtuoso tier number three and one available at AI Prodigy number two. If you're interested in talking with me or need any assistance, uh, make sure to check these out at my Patreon. Link will be in the description. Well, I hope you enjoy this project. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.